So on today's DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm going to be showing you a fairly quick and easy way for you to do green screen or chroma key effects right here in DaVinci Resolve. And I would say this is definitely way easier than the previous methods that we used to actually do this effect. So let's go ahead and get into DaVinci Resolve to see how we could do these green screen and chroma key effects. Welcome to another episode of geekoutdoors.com. On this channel, you'll learn how to be creative and I'll teach you the tools you need to create. So be sure to hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel create more content like this. So on previous versions of DaVinci Resolve prior to version 17, doing these chroma key or green screen effects, I think was a very difficult and complex thing to do, especially if you were brand new, because you'd either have to use something like the color tab right here, or you would have to use the way more complex fusion page. And so I myself didn't like using either of these methods. And I was thinking to myself, how come DaVinci Resolve doesn't have an easier way to do this like many other video editors? Well, thankfully it seems Blackmagic hurt us. And ever since version 17, they have given us an easier way to do chroma key and green screen while still giving you the more powerful and complex ways to do more advanced chroma keying. And so these methods are still here, but now we have a much simpler, quicker version. So now DaVinci Resolve actually has a very easy tool that you can use to do these chroma key and green screen effects. And so all you have to do is go into your effects library. So my effects library is here. And if for some reason you don't see it, you could choose this effects library tab right here. It'll turn it on and off. And what you would have to do is go down here to open effects and scroll down until you get to resolve FX key and you'll see something called 3D keyer. And this is what we're going to use. Now, the one thing that we're definitely going to need before we do any of this is some green screen video clips or images. And the one thing that I will highly want to stress is the quality of your green screen videos or clips is really going to determine how well this works. And I'll show you what I mean by showing you three different green screens. Both of these I've downloaded. So these are done, I would say more professionally because they definitely look a lot more better than what I have. And then on mine, this is one that I actually did in front of my green screen. And so you will see the difference between the way these things look and how it's very important that your green screen background, whether it is a physical background or a digital background is really uniform in color and light, because as you see with this final one, it makes it really difficult for this 3d keyer to make things look absolutely good or perfect in some cases, if you don't have a great green screen background. And so I'm going to show you how that looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and start off with the first clip. So this one is going to be the easiest one because this particular clip, I would say is perfect for green screen because the colors are all uniform and everything I think looks really clean and defined. And so all you have to do is go down here to your open effects, come down here to 3D here, and you could either double click on it or you could drag it above the clip. So I'm going to drag it above the clip. And once you've done that, you should see an FX symbol right here. And if you go up here to inspector, you could see the effects right there. If you do not see your inspector, you could turn it off or on. And normally the default is right here on the video tab. Just go to here to the effects tab. Now, one thing that's very important that you have to do is you want to make sure that your overlays are on. Okay. So right now I have my effects on, but the thing is nothing happens. I'm moving everything around and absolutely nothing is happening. Well, the reason is you do not have your overlay turned on. So if you come down here underneath the video, there are a couple of options here. So you see here, there's transform crop dynamic zoom, open effects, overlay fusion, overlay and annotations. And the thing is you need to activate it. So right now it's grayed out, but if you click on it, it comes on. So that means it activates whatever additional features are down here. So we'll go down here to open effects overlay and it's been activated because it's highlighted. Now if I click on it, it'll turn off. Now if I click on it now, now it's activated. So now whatever you apply on these effects, it's going to show up right here on your video clip. So now we have it and we'll go down here to pick and you just go ahead and pick the color that you want to apply the chroma key or green screen effect on. So we just click on it and bam, as you can tell, that was fairly easy. And I would say it looks pretty good, but obviously it's not perfect. There's still some green outlines here and I'm going to go over these options. So on some of these, it'd be very easy, but on later green screen videos, like the one I'm talking about here, the one that I did is going to take a lot more work. 
And so in this case, if you see this like green outline around your image, which most of the time you see, you can use a feature called Dispel and it'll make it look a lot better. And then another important thing that you could do is to see how clean your actual green screen is. So one thing you want to do is maybe turn off the clip below it. So I'm going to go ahead and disable the video track below and disable these other ones as well. So it's now just this particular green screen image that I have. And so you might be able to tell here, things look fairly good, but if you want it to be more exact and want it to look as best as possible, you want to go down here to output and instead of final composite, choose alpha highlight, black and white. And so this is how you know if your green screen is really working well, because if it has a white outline or it's marked in white, that means this part of it's going to show and everything in black is going to be transparent. So that's how you know how well that you've done your chroma keying. And so in this case, this is pretty much perfect. And so I'm going to go back to final composite and the D spelled helped a lot. And there's other features here. So I'm going to show you the show paths. So if you go up here and you choose your picker again, you can choose, you know, different parts of the actual video clip. And in this case, since it's already perfect, I don't have to do it again. But as you see in the later green screen, I'm going to have to use this quite a bit. So I won't actually show you this now, but there is a show path and you see more of that whenever I go on to the other clips. And there's other things right here as well. There's a color space, YUV HSL, and at least for me, the YUV works better. And I don't completely understand how all of these things work, but that's just what I found out by playing around. There's also a softness meter as well. So you could adjust the softness level. And then down here, we really won't mess with this yet because I really feel that this chroma keying is pretty perfect because of the fact that the original had such a good green screen right behind it. And so now we'll go ahead and turn on another clip right here and we'll watch it and I think that looks pretty awesome and that was really easy to do and so that's in front of a video but I could also show you how it looks like in front of just a still image and that is just excellent and this is so much easier than the previous way of doing chroma key or green screen effects uh, so now let's go ahead and move on to another clip and then finally, we'll go over to my clip, which is the most challenging and the one where the 3D cure might not be able to solve all your problems. And so the second green screen clip is very similar to the first one in terms of the fact that the green screen in the background is perfect. It's the same color. It's uniform throughout. But this one's definitely more complex because it is smoke. And so a lot of these things are changing in their size and motion. And so here's a case where things could get a little bit more difficult. But with some of the options that they give you in the 3D here, it does eliminate a lot of these potential problems. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to take the 3D here and put that on top of the clip. And it's already there because I just double clicked on it. And then we'll do the same thing that we did before. So I'm going to go down here to effects. It's already on and make sure that your effects overlay is turned on instead of off. And then you're going to do the same thing you did before. So pick. And we'll just pick the color, boom. And as you notice, there is still some green right around it. And this one's more difficult than the other one in terms of the fact that the green is gonna be more prominent because this is not a you know uniform image, okay? It's smoke, it's changing all the time. But just as we did earlier, you could use the despill effect. And wow, that works really well. And there's really not much more that I need to do there. And at the same time, you know, you could actually play around with these other effects if you want. But at least in this case, I think it looks pretty good and very similar to the other one. As long as you have a very good background, whether it's a green screen or a blue screen or any other color, as long as it's uniform and there's no real changes, then it's going to look pretty good. And the 3D keyer is going to do a great job. For serious YouTubers, check out TubeBuddy the premier tool news at geekoutdoors.com. Get more done today by checking out the affiliate link in the description area below. And now we have the final green screen clip. And this is one that I actually created myself. And so this is a case where that green screen or whatever color that you have in the background makes a huge difference. So in this case, I have my green screen cloth 
And as you can see, this is not perfect. It's not perfect in terms of color and uniformity. It's darker here. There's actually bends and folds in the fabric and there's lines here and the light is not even throughout. So this is a real case scenario where if you're going to be doing your own green screen videos, then you're going to be facing these same challenges. And so in this case, let's go ahead and try to do the same thing that we did earlier. And because this one's going to be a lot more complex, then you're going to be able to see all the features that the 3D keyer has to try to, you know, make it look better. So we'll go ahead and add the 3D keyer. It's on. My effects overlay is on. So we'll go here to the effects tab. So let's go ahead and try the same thing, but this one's going to be different. So if I just choose this color here, that looks okay. Not bad at all, but as you can tell, the green's still here. There's green outlines and there's different grades of green. So let me show you the whole path thing that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So whenever you use the 3D here, you remember that there was a show paths option. So what does that mean? Well, instead of just clicking on a spot of the color, you could actually draw a path. And what DaVinci Resolve is going to do is it's going to try to basically figure out the different color and lighting on your background. So that's what it's trying to do. So whenever you have different paths, you know, it's going to try to calculate that as best as possible, especially in scenarios like this, where your actual green screen or whatever color that you have is not perfect. So whenever you're chroma keying, it's not going to know exactly the different types of colors and gradations that things has. So that's why you have these show paths. And if for some reason you turn it off, you won't see them. And so that's okay if you just want to see how the image looks like without the paths, but I highly recommend that you have them on. And so in this case, this looks okay. And you can use the despill feature again. But if you actually go down to your output and choose alpha highlight black and white, you'll notice that it still looks pretty bad. And so if I try to use uh, the paths again, show paths here, it won't quite work on everything. And that's the thing that you're going to have to realize. So what that means is you're going to have to try to use the other features that the 3D Cure provides. And this is the matte finesse. There's a lot more features here. There's also a garbage match with I don't use. So let me show you this real quick. So the matte shape, there is no shape here, but if I choose rectangle, there's a matte above uh, my face. So this rectangle area, which you can move around and adjust. So there might be reasons that you want to do that. And also there is an ellipse as well. So for certain things, you might want to do that. But for this one, I'm not going to be using it. So I'm going to go ahead and put on none. So this is where you're going to be able to fine tune the chroma key that you have and try to adjust your green screen effect as much as possible. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and turn off show paths. And then I'm going to play around with this. And so there's actually two different sections. So we'll go ahead and start with this first one. So here's the denoise feature. So I'm going to try to adjust these. And the same thing with clean black and then clean white. There is a blur radius. So you see there, blur around uh, the actual points where you have the chroma keys. And there's also an in and out ratio as well. And so let's go ahead and watch that. Okay, that is better, uh, but it's not perfect. I still see some stuff right here. And so there's another option here on step two. So there's different operations here. You could choose shrink. Uh, there's grow, opening, and closing. And as I stated earlier, I don't know what all of these things mean. So all I do is I just keep experimenting with it, okay? And there's also different shapes as well. And then you could also change the radius. And there's something called iters. And there's black clip and white clip. So with each one of these things that you adjust, it will affect your overall image. And at this point, it looks okay, but it's definitely not perfect and it could be better. And this is a case where if you tried a lot of different things, then the 3D keyer itself might not work for you. And you're going to have to go to the more advanced options of using the color tab or the fusion page 
And either one of those is going to give you a lot more control and power over what I currently have with the 3D Cure. But that's the whole point of having the 3D Cure. If you have, you know, a good green screen effect already, uh, like I have right here, then it's going to be pretty much perfect for you to use the 3D Cure. And it's going to look really good in a very quick and simple fashion. However, if you have one like mine, where I think most people will, if they're doing their own green screen, then you're definitely going to have to take some time to play around and try to adjust things. And if all of these things don't work, well, at least you still have the more complex options as well. And even though there are more complex, these are pretty much what the professionals use. So you can definitely spend a lot of time fine tuning your chroma key. But at least for me, for most of my videos, I'm going to be using the 3D Cure. And if I get to a case where it's not perfect, well, I'll probably still use it anyway because I don't want to spend a lot of time trying to perfect my green screen or chroma key effect. So that is it on this video on how to do quick and simple chroma key green screen effects if you have something that's already done well beforehand. But if you don't like mine, there's definitely some options that you have here that you can play around with and your results will vary. But overall, I'm really glad that Blackmagic put this feature in here, especially for people who are brand new to using DaVinci Resolve and just doing this whole chroma key green screen stuff. So if you actually had any thoughts on this or any other ways that you do this, be sure to leave that in the comments area below. And if you did want to see more of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials and tips, I do have an entire playlist. I'll leave that in the description area below. So as always, if you did get value out of these videos, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. And if you're a creative geek like me, and you want to get exclusive access to more content that I don't put out here publicly on my YouTube channel, then join my Goal Content Creators Group, where you're going to get content like this and more for all the creative geeks out there. And the best part is, all of this is free. Simply head over to the link below, check on the page, and sign up for my Goal Content Creators Group.